My name is Stephen Smith, and I minister out in front of a killing facility in Augusta, Georgia, uh, five days a week, the days that they're open, and I rescue babies for Jesus. Back in 2015, you remember those Planned Parenthood videos where they were selling body parts? I think a lot of those videos shook people up. We happened to watch that video at the same time that we saw Babies Are Murdered Here. Uh, Jeff Durbin recommended it on his radio show. And I was listening to that radio show on a, on a BART train out in California coming home from work. And I was studying post-millennialism and kind of apologetics. and. I decided to watch this movie and sit down with my wife and watch it. And this was right, right in the middle of those videos coming out. I think the, the first or second one had just come out and it just, it opened our eyes. So that, that's, that was the impetus for me to go out with my wife. Um, in fact, the next night or the night after the next weekend, um, day off, she, got some signs, some poster boards, and made a Babies Are Murdered Here sign. And I, I want to let you know, you don't have to be eloquent. Um, you just have to show up. Uh, she actually misspelled the sign and didn't put ED, just put RD at the end. So, um, But we used that sign, and, and God, God used us, and He started us to, to be where we're at today. But I want to be there a half, a half hour early at, at the least because I want to be there to look like the first one that they'll see. You're always going to see somebody come in. They don't want to break that ice. They don't want to jump over that hedge of thorns that you've already prepared. They'll shark around. It's a cul-de-sac where I serve. So it's in a medical center. You'd see all the other businesses around it. They look identical, but that's the one where they killed 12 to 15 children a day. And if it weren't for those graphic image signs and someone standing there with literature and offering help, they would think it's just a dentist's place, you know? So it's important to be there first and to be that witness, that's, that Samaritan, that'll offer help to somebody in need or give, give information. Paul talks about the purpose of the church, bringing Jew and Gentile together. You know, in Ephesians 2, he talks about the unity of the body. But he actually talks about what the purpose and mission of the church is. And this is so important, especially in an abortion mill ministry where you're fighting wicked spirits. Check this out. It says, The plan of the mystery, hidden for ages in God, who created all things, so that through the church the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. We're taking these places back to Jesus. We're dismantling, we're, we're putting these wicked rulers and, and the world on notice that Jesus is king. So this is, this is a church operation. It has to be done through the church, through the gospel. And that's the problem with the pro-life movement. Um, it's, it's not movie passes and balloons out there. It's not going to change your heart. We see people with Porsches and Maserati show up. We see pastors show up. We see... Killing, killing your babies. We, we, we see people that it's not really what's in their wallet, it's what's not in their heart. The gospel is um, the, the holiness and righteousness of God revealed to sinful man, right? So we want to, we want to show that. We want to show man. We want to show God. We want to show how God can be right with man. It's a spiritual issue. Christ says, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up. When we lift up Christ, we, we preach Him. We preach Him, and, and He draws men to Himself. So that's, that's the effective part of ministry. A lot of Christ's ministry, He was speaking the hard things. You can speak the hard things winsomely. You can do that. In fact, you should do that. But it's the humanism that's going to destroy your ministry you know the man-centered 
oh, if they only had this, if they only, if only their wallet was fatter, or, you know, you can, you can actually be taken as a sucker doing that, helping somebody, throwing pills on it. I, when, when I, I come out of a, of a background of being a drug addict, I, I, didn't, I didn't stop and turn to Christ because people were throwing pillows under my head. You know, I stopped when I realized my need for God, you know. Well, I, I, I like to ask people, why would you not? And make them think, well, there's other things that I can be doing. I'd, I'd encourage them to look in Scripture and see what happens to nations that kill their children and see if you're loving any of your neighbors by letting this happen, knowing what God says about it. Because I think every Christian in some level should practice true and undefiled religion, which is to visit the orphan in their affliction. So like, I don't know what you would want to be, how you would want to be in this ministry. I don't, I don't think everybody is uh, called to be in front of a mill at the same time, you know? They could be supporting somebody at a mill. We see a lot of fruit out there, um, and not every turn away is a, is a happy story for them at that point. I'm sure that they'll come to realize, you know, that what, what God did, um, hopefully. We try, to, we try to tell people, you know, what, how did God change your mind? I think that's important to always point them back to God. Otherwise, they're th gonna think that they made a good decision on their own. That's not, that's not what I want somebody to walk away from. But um, we, we have a, a one lady that you'll be speaking with, her, her name's Grace. Um, she made three attempts at this mill on her child's life and one in Atlanta. And that child's alive today, a beautiful baby. Um, she came to her senses. She comes out and serves in the ministry on Saturday mornings now. And you can't argue with that. Another thing is like when a brother calls you that you don't know or messages you on Facebook and says, oh brother, I wanna do what you're doing. When you see that you put some videos out, you may have just been clearing your camera out and oh, I'm just gonna put this on YouTube. I'm gonna save it out there and see what, you know, maybe this will help somebody. But when you find out that somebody's watching those videos and being discipled on them and wants to do what you're doing and then he's doing it daily, that's like a true victory, yeah. Or when you, or when you see a father, man up and go rescue his child. That's a cool one too. Yeah. I, I say this to, to women: whatever you do, you're never going to be the same. You're never going to be the same. You'll never regret not murdering your baby. Something's going to happen to you if you do. We live in God's world. That's the fact. He's, he has a law. He says, cursed are the hands that shed innocent blood. I don't know what that looks like, but you're not going to be the same. And there's folks that will help you. There are Christians out there. If you, if you seek God, He'll provide for you. And He'll do it through His church. He will. He does it all the time.